Hey Dean, Katie here from Equestrian Movement and today I want to introduce to you our little friend Nugget. We're going to be going around our Halloween obstacle course where we're introducing our horses to all of the scary obstacles in our arena. So in our holistic horse handling program under our fourth pillar we talk about emotional agility. Emotional agility is our ability to work with our horses to shift them out of an emotional state that you know, may not be so conducive to wanting to ride them. <laughs> For example, we're often dealing with a lot of spookiness and reactivity in our horses being flight animals. So in this uh, emotional agility exercise, we're teaching confidence through curiosity instead of uh, desensitization through sacking them out. And so what this does is it gives them the emotional agility tools to navigate, know how to navigate things that they're scared of. So rather than, um, you know, telling them to just stand and, and freeze if they're scared, we're saying, go over, have a look at it, have a smile, investigate it. And uh, that then they learn, they build that confidence in investigating the things that they're they're scared of, which is a much handier tool under saddle if we're going out on trail rides and we're wanting to uh, navigate scary obstacle courses because what you can say to the horse then is to go touch the thing that they're scared of and they can go touch it and they can find confidence in the fact that they went and they saw the scary thing in it and they didn't die and so then they have confidence to investigate the next thing that they're scared of. So what we're doing is we're building an emotional resilience in the horses for how to address the things that they're scared of and tell it instead of telling them to just not react, to just freeze. And so if this is something that you can try yourself is that it's very hard to be scared and curious at the same time. So if you're feeling fear, what you can do instead is you can become curious about where that fear is coming from in you. And by doing this with the horses, it gives them permission to investigate the things that they're scared of. There's a little scary mummy that's <laughs> crawling along the floor. We've got our scary goo that's shaking in his chains and so what we're doing is we're giving the horses the uh, resilience and the emotional agility tools to deal with the issues that they might be having with their own um, you know fear state and, and dealing with their fear state so having taught a lot of beginner and intermediate riders we come across the the uh, idea of working safely around the horses quite a bit. So it's really easy as a beginner to intermediate rider, you know, to get scared of the horses and the behaviors and the things they can do because it can get very volatile. And so what we want to think about when we're working with the horses is that it's not about not being scared because you don't want to be naive to what the horses can potentially do because they are big flight animals that do um, have <laughs> reactive responses and they can get us hurt. What you need to do though is you need to make sure that you're not um, trans admitting that your own personal fear state to the horse because the horse doesn't understand um, that the reason why you're scared is because of them. So if they're getting scared and then they start to see you getting scared so you're starting to hold that fear tension in your body then the horse is going to go see the human is scared there's something to be scared of and then they get more scared and then your fear feeds their fear and their fear feeds your fear and at that point, we're just going to uh, end up in a catastrophic implosion of fear states against each other. So there is a place where, you know, in all training, we're looking at, you know, just a little bit of an emotional disconnect to the horse's emotional state. Like if you're starting to get frustrated with the horse, then the training is no longer going to go well. If you're starting to get scared of the horse, then your training is no longer going to go well. If you're getting angry, like any of those emotional states are going to impact the quality of your training because the horse is reading that in your body language. So to the best of our ability, you need to 
uh, really understand how to connect in with your breath so that you can have some self-regulation of your own emotional state and nervous system state. And you might even need some emotional agility tools of your own to be able to shift you out of those emotional states. And then to the best of our ability, we want to come back into the training place, training mindset from a place of love because then we're going to be transmitting to the horse an openness and a kindness and a softness that's going to help them navigate the difficulties that they're having within that training session. So when it comes to being scared of the horses, it's naive not to be scared of the potential they have to injure us. And so it's really about making sure that you're not overfacing yourself and your horse. So you're not going from, you know, only having ever ridden in a, a round yard, completely fenced, to like going out to your first trial ride with no exposures and no practice riding outside of walls. We only want to change one variable at a time and we want to make sure that we have the tools to navigate those variables. So if we make that goal reach too far, we've like jumped too many skill sets to go from where we are now to that next step, then inevitably we're going to create a dangerous situation for ourselves and it dangerous situation for our horses. That's why in our holistic horse handling program, we have a layering of training sessions and exposures and experiences that develop both your skill set in the way that you work with and handle your horse, but also in the horse's skill set in the way that they engage with their environment and they get engaged in relationship with you. And then um, together, learning you know what kind of things is your horse scared of what kind of things are they not scared of so you know some horses can be scared uh in their own environment when things change within their environment but you could change environment and they're not scared at all because they like the consistency of what they know and so by putting them into a place that they don't know it's all new so they don't have any um consistency there to say oh no that's moved out of its spot that's in the wrong place some horses are particularly reactive to sounds and um smells it's just getting to know your horse and, and how best to work with it. The other thing that we're looking at is we want to know our horse's tension holding and tension releasing skills so or behaviors so that we can see, for example, here where we get that tension holding cue from Nugget. We know uh, that we're not going to be putting pressure on him at that point until we get a tension releasing cue and that consent to, to re-engage and to continue with the training. So I teach my students that it's okay to be scared of your horse because it means that you're not naive to what they can do to you. And so that means that it gives you the potential to be very strategic and intentional in building your skills. And that's where the trust and the confidence happens. That's where the trust and confidence in each other happens as well. You want to create positive experience on top of positive experience on top of positive experience uh, with you and your horse. And the thing is, is that you are 100% in control of that uh, you can sometimes feel like you're not in control of that, but really it's you putting yourself and your horse into these situations. So you want to think about, you know, what is required of you and your horse to do a particular thing that you're wanting to do, to work towards a particular goal that you're working towards. What are the skills required? And particularly if you're, you know, um, like, beginner to intermediate, you may not always know what skills are required of you to navigate the bigger challenges and what skills are going to come up as a requirement from your horse to navigate those bigger um, challenges. But that's why we have our holistic horse handling program where it takes you from skill set to skill set on how you're going to layer these skills on, on top of each other so that you can create positive experiences that build trust and confidence in each other. When it comes to building a strong relationship where you have a horse that enjoys work, asks to be ridden and knows how to look after you, it is, you know, those challenges 
of doing like those things that are just a little bit outside of the comfort zone and that you can show up as a leader worth following to help navigate them through it so that you're creating a positive experience and a positive resolution to their stress that brings you and your horse closer together. If you're putting like stretching that comfort zone and testing and challenging those skill sets um, without thinking strategically about if this is the next best skill to be attempting with my horse, then it's inevitably going to go pear-shaped and that's when your horse loses trust and confidence in you as your ability to give direction and lead. And then also you lose trust and confidence in your horse because they've reacted in a way that now makes you scared of them. So it's important to recognize that horses are going to horse. We have to know that they have the potential to buck rear, bolt, strike, you know, all of those kinds of things when they feel scared and they feel threatened. And that is what's going to see us get injured. So if we can create strategic, intentional shaping plans and environments and exposures for them where we're building out the trust and the confidence in each other and that quality of connection, then you can navigate these challenges in riding together. That's it for me for today. Until next time, happy trails.